paper taped down here. Here's our painting that we're going to be working on. My paper is Strathmore watercolor paper. I'll show you the front here so you can see what it looks like. It is pretty cheap. So if you're looking for some watercolor paper just to get you started, this is a good option. This whole pack is like five to seven dollars and it has 10 pieces of paper. So this is a good spot to get started. Arches is great as well. I see your comment. Um, my paints are Windsor Newton watercolors. These are professional watercolor paints. You do not have to have professional watercolor paints. Whatever you have at home and in stock is totally fine. And then my paint brushes are Princeton Neptune brushes. I like these a lot. If you're looking for um, some new watercolor brushes, these are great. The, I've had these for two years and they last me a long time. So they're a little bit, a little bit more of an investment, but they last you a long time. They don't shed hairs or anything. And I really like these. So all of my um, art supplies, including this stuff, but also everything that I've ever tried really is in my Amazon storefront, which is linked to my bio. It's the tab called uh, art supply recommendations. So if you're looking for art supplies that I've tried and some recommendations from me, you can try that out. It also helps me out because I get a little commission from those sales. So you can support me doing that too. Um, this is our painting for today. This is a little mini landscape painting. If you'd like to screenshot this right now so you have the reference photo, you can go ahead and do that. That way you don't have to, I don't need to keep bringing, I will bring it back while we're painting, but that way you can have it when you need it. Um, we'll be going kind of from top to bottom here. So we're gonna paint the sky first, then these mountains, then we'll kind of paint the foreground with these trees and the grass. And yes, we're gonna paint two different types of trees here. So we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to do both of these kinds of trees. So it should be a pretty fun painting. Um, before we get started, my usual kind of spiel is that this is all just for fun. Um, this will take about an hour. We're just kind of doing this to learn something, hopefully to enjoy painting together um, and to enjoy the process of painting for yourself. So if, especially if you're a new artist or a beginner artist, don't put too much pressure on yourself to paint a masterpiece right now. This is hopefully just for learning and for fun. So it's okay if your painting doesn't turn out exactly how you want it. Um, that's not the point. The point is to have fun. Okay. So be gentle with yourself. Please be nice in the comments and, um, be nice to me as well. We're all here to have just a fun time. And while we're painting too, if you have time to double tap that screen, that sends me likes and it helps me out and pushes this live to more people. So that is always helpful. You can do it as many times as you want. Okay. We don't really need to do any sort of pencil sketch for today. We're going to kind of do this a la prima, which means we're just going to put the paint on the paper without planning it too much. Um, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that we need to do is take our paintbrush and put a little drop of water in each of our watercolor pans. This just helps to get this color start to dissolve, get this color dissolved. Hello and uh, it makes it easier for us to work with later. So we might not use all of these colors, but there's no harm in um, putting some water in them and starting to dissolve them now. If you have a spray bottle, you could use that as well, but I've always just done this, so this is what I'm sticking to. And while we're going through this as well, if you have any art-related questions, feel free to put those in the comments. Um, I will try to get to most of them, but I do have to paint and talk at the same time, so I apologize if I don't get to your question. Okay, always been intimidated by watercolor. I understand, but watercolor is very fun if you can learn to kind of let go of the controlling um, instinct that we all have, it can be really fun. So the first thing that we're going to do with this painting is the sky and we're gonna do kind of a wet on wet technique here. So we need a gray color and then we're gonna put that onto a wet surface. So in your palette, go ahead and mix a gray color, whatever gray you have. I have a gray that's already in my palette. It's a very cool gray. So I like to mix a little bit of burnt sienna, which is kind of an orange color into it. And that turns it into a more neutral gray. If you just have black in your palette, you can use that. That will work just fine. But we're gonna go for kind of a grayish black. Yes, I can put the reference photo up there. See if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that okay. At least you can kind of peek in. So there's the gray that I'm using. Don't overthink it, just mix yourself a little gray. And now we're going to put some water from our cup down on about half, maybe like two thirds, the top two thirds of this paper. And then we're gonna put that gray into it. And this is a wet on wet technique. So that will allow the gray to kind of move around on the paper and it'll give us a nice fun um, 
cloudy sky. So I'm going to take my brush, start laying down a layer of water. Don't be too gentle with this. Just put down a layer of water on the top two thirds ish of your paper. Tilt your head so you can see the light reflecting off of it. That way you can see if you've missed any spots. And then once you've covered it, while that's still wet, go into your gray color, start at the top and just start putting in some random brush strokes with some movement. So maybe some short ones, maybe some longer ones, leaving some white spots in there too. And then once we kind of get down to about halfway, we're gonna stop. Now, you can just let it go. You can leave it like this, or if you've taped your paper down just to the sketchbook, you can pick it up and start tilting it. And you can see that that makes all those colors run into each other on that wet paper. And this will kind of blend it out for you a little bit better. So I like to go in slow circles and that will kind of blend it all out with each other. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll just set it flat and it'll stop. And we have kind of a misty gray sky. I do this paint, I do this technique a lot with my skies because it makes a really nice, um, easy, loose sky that you can just kind of put in the background of everything. One other thing that you can do is take a completely dry brush, so dry it off all the way with your paper towel. And then if you lost some of those white spots, you can go back in and pick up some of that color. You can see there and bring back some of those highlights. Are you a TikTok teacher or actually an art teacher? Um, well, I mean, I'm not, I would consider myself an art teacher. I don't teach anywhere besides TikTok, but I would still consider myself to be an art teacher because I've been doing this for a while. So you can pick up some of this color, as you can see here, and that kind of brings back those lighter spots. All of those are optional. Just do whatever you feel like you want to do for your painting. But eventually you'll end up with a sky that looks something like this. What kind of paper is that? It is uh, Strathmore watercolor paper. At what age did you start painting? Uh, when I could hold a brush. I really just started, I really enjoyed drawing and painting as a kid and I just have never, never stopped. Okay, so there we go, there's our sky. All right, new viewer, when's your live schedule? I do these lives every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes I do have to skip a weekend if I'm busy or on vacation, but usually these are every Saturday at this time. Does everyone learn the, pace, everyone learn the basics of painting then find their own style of painting? Yeah, I think that is about the way that, that things go. Um, some people just kind of immediately fall in love with a certain kind of painting. Some people try a lot of different things and, and can do a lot of different things. I enjoy lots of different um, art mediums, so I wouldn't say that I have one particular um, medium or I kind of have a style, I suppose, but you know, I like to play with different mediums, so it's different for everyone, I would say. And we're gonna wait for this sky to dry for the most part. So if you have any art related questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, if you have a hairdryer at home, feel free to hit it with a hairdryer. Um, you don't have to, I'm not going to right now, just so that we have time to answer some questions. How do you prevent the tape from ripping the paper? Um, my tape doesn't really rip this paper right here, but if you're having trouble with that, heat it up with a hairdryer first and that will, um, take that and it'll kind of release the glue. Can you go over what colors you have in your tin? Yes. I kind of created this watercolor palette for myself and I really like it. This is like a lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium free orange, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, magenta, sap green, hooker's green, turquoise, cerulean, windsor blue, which is kind of like a um, phthalo blue, ultramarine, indigo, Van Dyke Brown, and Payne's Gray. So those are all the colors that I have. I love this palette. It's every color that I need. I don't really need any more than this for my paintings. Um, and it's probably my favorite art supply because I kind of curated that on my own, which I really enjoyed. Let's see what else. Nope, we don't need white for this. 
how many minutes you wait for starting to paint again. Probably about like one minute. Mine's almost dry. Do you ever get tired of, of the same questions? My question is, do you ever use masking fluid? Yes, I do get tired of the same questions, but I understand that people don't know, so I try to be patient with it. Um, and no, I don't really use masking fluid. Um, I My style of painting is a little bit more spontaneous, and masking fluid requires that you kind of plan out where those highlights are going to be before you start painting, and I'm just not very good at that, so I don't really do masking fluid. It is watercolor paper, not rice paper. What's the difference between gouache and acrylic paint? I never understand. Acrylic paint is um, plastic polymer based. Gouache paint is very similar to watercolor, but it's just more opaque. So acrylic, once it's dry, can't be reactivated. It is dry, it's down, you can't really move it. Gouache can be reactivated. Um, even once it's on the palette, even once it's dry on the paper, you can take some water and kind of go over it and it will um, reactivate, if that makes sense. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get started with our next step here, which is going to be these mountains. So we've got some mountains here in the background. We're going to kind of work in layers here um, and do this back one first and then kind of build up the color for the ones in front. Okay, so for this we need a bluish gray. So not the gray that we just used for the sky. We want it to be definitely more blue. So I'm going to mix Jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, so gouache also has the calcium carbonate in it to yeah, so Gouache has a very matte, sometimes chalky. If you get some higher quality gouache, it doesn't necessarily look chalky, but it does look, it does dry very matte. Okay, so here's that blue gray. So you can see this is the gray that we use for the sky. This is definitely more blue here. Okay, so that's kind of the color that we're going for. And we wanna water this down a bit um, because we're doing the furthest mountain away from us right now, and we want this one to be the lightest one. Okay, so we want a pretty light blue-gray. And when you're ready, these mountains go about a little bit, maybe a little bit more than halfway up. So whenever you're ready, just start putting in a little mountain range back here. Something like this. And we're gonna fill in a bit of it like this, and then you're gonna clean off your brush, keep it damp, and then just run that along the bottom so that we kind of blend out that bottom there. Okay? So there's our first little mountain range. What's the best watercolor paper? That is up to interpretation and your opinion. I really like Arches watercolor. Strathmore is also good. Fabriano is a good paper brand as well. There are lots of options. All right, so we're gonna let this dry here just another minute or two. And while we're waiting for this to dry, I do just wanna mention that I do, um, I do take tips if you're feeling so inclined. My Venmo is listed in my bio, my PayPal is linked in my bio, so if you're enjoying the session, feel free to leave me a tip or a gift in one of those two places. Can we have sunset? Not in this one, but I have done painting lessons before, many before, that are available on my YouTube channel that include sunset. So if you're looking for a lesson from me that is different from this one, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is linked in my bio. How do you prevent hard lines? Um, well. Up here, I do want a hard line, so you make sure you're painting on dry paper. Down here, I wanted a soft line, so I blended it out with water before it has a chance to dry. And that kind of stuff just takes practice. What brand of your watercolors? They are Windsor & Newton. That's the brand. Again, all of my art supplies are linked in my bio. There's a tab called Art Supply Recommendations, and you can find everything that I'm using today and also... Um, everything that I've tried and would recommend. Okay, 
just one more minute here while this dries. I can see it's still a little shiny right here, so I'm just gonna wait for that. Oh, someone sent me a gift on here, that's very nice. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the likes, guys. We're at 13.5 thousand, that's awesome. Do you have a reference picture on that one? I use uh, this one. This is a painting that I did, and we're using this as the reference photo. Oh my gosh, thank you for the likes, everybody. Is Canson a good brand for watercolor paper? Canson is not my favorite, um, but it is very cost effective. So if you're looking for a beginner kind of watercolor paper, that is a great option for you. I am just, I am a professional artist, so I use slightly more expensive watercolor paper, um, but you do not have to do that. And Canson is a great brand if you're just looking to get into it. All right, we're gonna start with our next layer of mountains here. So we're gonna use the same color. We just wanna darken it a little bit. So whatever colors you put in there, um, just a minute ago to paint that first layer of mountains, put a few of those colors in there again. And don't add any more water. And that should give you a slightly darker version of that color. How do you feel about Etcher watercolor? I like their stuff a lot. I have worked with that brand um, professionally and I love their sketchbooks and I also do like their uh, palette. I think it's a great watercolor palette. I've got that one in my um, Amazon storefront as well. Okay, so once you have your blue-gray color, we are going to kind of go over, I'll show you here. So we're gonna kind of go over half of these mountains and then just kind of bring them down about halfway across here. And that will um, give us this second layer of mountains. So you're gonna kind of trace what you just did somewhat carefully. And when you feel like you want to kind of separate it from that mountain range in the back, you just kind of bring it down like this and do the same thing, fill it in, and then take your clean, damp brush and blend out the bottom there. There we go. Do you do colored pencil art? No, I do not. I have a lot of respect for people who do because that is a haul. Okay, don't worry about this little edge right here. We're gonna cover that up. What do you feel about refillable watercolor pens? I actually just started using some watercolor brush pens. I don't know if they're refillable, um, but I'm really enjoying it. I did this little doodle today just in my free time with some watercolor brush pens and I'm really enjoying trying them out for little doodles and sketches like this so I would recommend is having more GSM paper for better for watercolor um to a point yeah I don't think this is 140 uh, pounds per square inch I don't know what it is in grams um, and that is probably a that's a good weight for watercolor paper it doesn't really need to be any more than that is fine but I don't know if it has anything I don't know if it really affects the quality of the painting. It just needs to be heavy enough to take all of the water that we're putting on it. And then after that, I don't know if it really changes the, the final result. What's a good brand of watercolor? And all of my recommendations are linked in my bio, a tab called Art Supply Recommendations. I like the Koi watercolor palette. I don't know what your budget is, um, so that kind of depends. Koi watercolor palettes are good. Etcher one is great. Um, Cotman, the Cotman series is Windsor Newton, but it's student grade, so those are all some good um, options. Do you have a schedule of how often you go live here? I go live every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So this time every week. What are you using as the backboard? Um, it's just on my, this is just in a sketchbook and then it's on my art desk. All right. Next step, we're gonna do one more layer of mountains in here, um, kind of in the bottom here. Um, so again, darken up this color one more time. We want the darkest version of this color now. Not too dark, but the darkest of the three. I would recommend swatching it so you make sure you're, you've got the right tone. And then I'm gonna go from like here and just kind of bring this one up like that. And then again, we'll just kind of bring that down over there. 
adding black or blue. I'm, I'm adding gray, brown, and blue. I don't use black. I don't know if you noticed when I read out my colors, I don't use black in my watercolors. Um, I mix my dark colors with other colors just because I like it better. So I mixed just a few dark colors to get that. Where do you get your references from? I usually take mine um, from traveling or just from where I can find them, but I um, do use a website called Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H, um, and they have royalty-free reference photos that I use. You don't have to use royalty-free if you're just a hobby artist. Um, I sell my art, so I do wanna make sure that I am um, not taking anybody else's work or photography when I'm painting and selling my art. Where do you take your inspiration from the painting you make? Again, like I said, it's just my own reference photo. I did not draw the mountains. I just put them on there where I wanted to. All right, we're doing well on time here. Do you have watercolor pencils? Um, I have a couple times. I don't really like that either. It's not my favorite, um, but I know people do really like them. Okay. Now, we don't really need to wait for that mountain to dry because we're gonna do the foreground here. So we're gonna paint in this first layer of the grassy area. So this is kind of a golden, we're gonna mix some green in here, but kind of a golden grassy area. Um, and we're gonna let that blend kind of right up into the mountains. And then we'll cover that, um, that transition with these trees. So we don't need to worry about how um, that transition looks. We're gonna cover it up later. So I'm gonna clean my palette here real quick. patient so I'd have to use a dryer between layers. I do when I'm painting on my own I definitely use a hair dryer. It is I don't really use a hair dryer on my hair. My hair dryer is sitting here at my art desk at all times. Any YouTube channels for beginners? Well I have a YouTube channel that you should go follow. I'll be posting more and more content on there um, in the coming months so please go subscribe that would mean a lot to me. All the paint and sips are uploaded there too linked to my bio. So we need a golden color. I like to use yellow ochre. Feel free to just use whatever yellow is in your palette. I would mix a little bit of brown into it maybe. We just want kind of an earthy yellow tone like this. Something like that. Why did you clean your palette? You waste some paints. That is just what happens. You can't use up all the paint. It is what it is. Okay, and then we also need a green. So I'm gonna do green mixed with that kind of golden yellow color to make it um, not super different. So we want kind of a lighter earthy green. If that makes sense, I'll show you. So I mixed together that yellow with some green and a little bit of brown. And I made that color. Yeah, and I don't really count it as wasting paint either. It's just the paint that I needed to use for the painting. What do you do with the swatches? I usually just recycle them. How much is your monthly expenses for art? If you don't mind me asking. Um, it depends. I would say including like materials, shipping, um, everything, everything that I have to spend on art, I would say between 300 and $500 a month. But that is just what, um, that's just what it takes. <laughs> this is my job. So business expensive. Business expenses. Uh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Here we go. So we're going to use this yellow here. And we're going to put this down kind of in the entire bottom section of this painting here. And then we're going to, while it's still wet, drop some green in there so that it kind of blends. So just go ahead and start filling in this bottom section here. Don't worry about that transition, like I said. We can even, if you want, take that clean, damp brush like we were doing with the mountains and just do the same technique in reverse to kind of take away that harsh line. And then we'll take that green and just kind of drop it in. I like to go along with what I imagine to be the contours of the land. So I'm kind of keeping it horizontal, maybe a little bit 
diagonal to show that there's some hills in here maybe but that should kind of blend in with that um, yellow there another option is to take some really strong yellow so like some undiluted almost undiluted color and again while this is still wet you could drop some of that in to give you some slightly um, stronger color areas up to you those are all your options any tips for getting crisp edges on purpose when I watercolor it all smushes out that would be to um, make sure your the previous layers are dry before you paint the next layer um, that kind of bleeding and feathering can happen when um, you don't wait enough time for that first layer to dry so use a hair dryer make sure that pa paper is really truly dry before you start with the next layer all right so as you're doing that just um, again to plug my own stuff because you're here and you're a captive audience um, my venmo is listed in my bio and my paypal is linked in my bio so if you enjoy today's session feel free to leave me a tip or a gift that is always really helpful for me i am a full-time artist so it does help me pay the bills um, my etsy shop is linked in my bio as well so if you are looking for some art for yourself i sell bookmarks paintings prints postcards all that good stuff um, there holidays are coming up so if you want to get a head start on that i've got some fall stuff check out my etsy shop it helps me out and uh also my youtube channel is in my bio link to my bio so if you'd like to subscribe to that that's where all these paint and sip lessons get uploaded and i upload i'm going to upload some original content to youtube pretty soon too so make sure you check that out too there's all the plugs check out my stuff how much water do I have to use for the little color trays? I finally upgraded my watercolors. So it depends on the strength of the color that you need. So if you need a stronger, more, more opaque color, you will add less water. And if you need a watered down, lighter color, you will add more water. And the amount of that will just depend on how big your paper is and how much, um, how much area you need to cover with that particular color. So if you're just covering a very small area, you can just make a small amount of whatever color you need. If you're covering a larger area, make more. And that just takes practice. I think I messed up. Don't worry, we're in the ugly stage right now. It will all come together soon. <laughs> you did not mess up. Remember what I said at the beginning of this, this is all just for fun. It does not matter how your painting turns out. I'm super new to watercolor. Do you just have a jar of water next to you? Or do you use a dropper? Yep, it's just a cup. It's a nasty, dirty paint cup of water that I've had for about three years. All right, I'm new to this. What watercolors do you recommend? Again, all my art supplies recommendations are linked in my bio. Tab called art supply recommendations. It's my Amazon storefront. Helps me out too because I get a small commission for many of those and it doesn't cost you anything else. All righty. It's time to put these trees in. So we're going to do a couple of, yeah, don't drink the paint cup. Um, we're gonna do a couple of different kinds of trees. These here are kind of more uh, deciduous trees, kind of these rounded ones. And then we've got some evergreen trees sticking up in here too. So we're gonna paint both. If you would prefer to just paint one type and you wanna practice one specific type of tree, feel free to do that. I'm just gonna show you how to do both, okay? So we need a pretty dark uh, green color for this. This is where we get that contrast. So my little spiel about making a dark green color is to start with whatever green that you have in your palette and then to darken it, you're gonna add blue and brown. I don't like adding black because it kind of dulls down the color. So instead to make a dark green, you're gonna add blue and then some brown. And that will make a really good evergreen tree color. See, that's a pretty dark green there. I love my old pickle jar with all the... Yeah, I use, I use my pickle jars for my oil paintings because I got to keep paint thinner in them and I can't keep paint thinner in plastic. So, yeah. So there's that dark green. And now, as we're painting this, you can kind of change up this green color so you can add more green, more blue, more brown, and that will kind of change up the ratio and change up the color just a little bit. So feel free to do that. Feel free to experiment with that as we go. 
for these deciduous trees, it's kind of a rounded shape and we're just gonna focus on the outer edge of it. So I'm gonna kind of figure out where I want this tree to go. And I'm just going to kind of focus for now on the outside shape, which is just kind of these dots because we want to see through the edge of the tree. That's where the most holes are. So I'm kind of making a rounded shape, not too perfectly round. We want to have some spots that are like kind of branches sticking out, I suppose. Um, and then once you kind of fill in that outside, you can fill in most of the inside. And this is a good time to maybe change up that color a little bit, maybe add blue as we get toward the bottom here. And that will just help with the color variation. And then we'll just kind of paint a loose, flat bottom for the tree. We'll add shadows to this later, so don't worry about the, what the bottom looks like for now. Okay, it looks a little weird right now. We have to add more for it to look regular. So maybe I'll add another one here that's a little bit shorter. And like I said before, we're just kind of going around the outside, dotting, letting there be little holes through it, and then we can fill in the rest kind of loosely. Maybe you leave a few little areas where you can peek through the tree in the center there, if you can see that. And then I'll change up the color a little bit, maybe more brown, add that in there. It's just good to add the color variation. Okay. And we can just keep going across the painting like this. Um, if we, I'm gonna show the evergreen tree now. If you wanna just keep painting the deciduous trees, you can and just ignore me for the next couple of minutes. But to paint the evergreen tree, we're gonna start with um, just a really thin line up at the top here where you want the top of the tree to be, and then draw a little V underneath that. And then as we work our way down, you're gonna kind of draw Vs kind of going out from the middle of the tree. And you want the Vs to be like up here, up here, up here. Does, you can kind of um, change up the angle of the V and it will look kind of like the silhouette of an evergreen tree. Cross the branches over each other and we're just gonna kind of widen the tree gradually as we go down. So you don't want the tree to be an equilibrium triangle, <laughs> equilateral triangle, that's the, that's the word. We just want it to widen very, very slowly as we work our way down and just adding branches on the outside. one maybe a little bit in front of the others maybe that one ends like here and it's a little bit in front of those trees behind it there we go so there's an evergreen tree doesn't the wet brush mixing in them colors contaminate the original color of the colors no not really I mean it does a little bit but uh, watercolor pigment is very concentrated in these uh, pans and so really if I drop a little bit of color into another one the original color will drown it out It won't really change the color all that much. I am careful about my yellows because those are the lightest and I try not to dip um, You know dark green into the yellow I do sometimes because I'm lazy, but I try not to do that, but the other colors are so strong that any um, You know color other color will be drowned out once I mix it up a little bit Okay, maybe next to this one, I'll add another evergreen tree. So I can show you again. I'll make this one a little bit shorter maybe. So that'll go right there. One vertical line for the top. And then we're gonna start with a very small V shape and then just start putting in those branches at different angles as we work down the tree. Just make them slightly wider as we work our way down. Maybe this one ends up here. I don't know. There we go. There's our evergreen trees. What's the biggest size painting you've ever made? Um, it's at my parents' house. I think it's like a 24 by 30. I made it in 
college when I was in an oil painting class. Um, and that was a good time for me to make big canvases because my college classes provided the canvas material, so we stretched our own canvases. I just had to buy the stretcher bars and they had a giant roll of canvas material there. And so it was a lot cheaper for me to make that giant canvas and <laughs> paint on it um, than it would be for me right now. So now I do slightly smaller paintings, usually 18 by 24 is the biggest that I'll paint um, for myself or for commission right now. I wanna try, but it's so scary. It's not scary, it's not gonna bite you, it's not gonna kill you. It's literally just paint, it is okay. I think people have a, as we, I'm not saying this to rag on you at all. This is just a common reaction that I get for people saying they're scared to paint. Um, we have a tendency as we get to adults to think that we can't be bad at anything ever. Um, and this is an advantage to, for me, as I kept painting from the time I was a child, I made a ton of bad paintings and I still do. But when you start again as an adult, you feel like you need to be good at it and you're scared that you're going to be bad at it. You're scared to make bad paintings. And it's really tough um, to overcome that. So I just urge you to try and remember that it's all just for fun and no one's gonna come into your house and see you know, a painting that you made that you didn't like and judge you for that, you know? If you feel like you wanna paint, you should paint and not, um, don't be scared to make bad paintings. All artists make bad paintings all the time, including me, so. Are you outside? Does How does outdoor versus indoor light impact painting? I'm inside. I know it sounds like I'm outside. I'm in this uh, sunroom that I have in my apartment, which I really love for painting because it gets really good light on all, all sides. Um, but because I have the window open and it's kind of near a road, I have some road noise. So that's the only downside. Um, I don't really like painting outside. It's just not my favorite. You have to have really good conditions for me to be comfortable painting outside. Like the perfect temperature, no wind, um, not too hot, not cold, no rain, obviously. So it just kind of, it's kind of rare to get some good outdoor painting weather. Some people are more hardy than I am and are fine with painting outside in whatever weather. I am not like that. <laughs> sketchbooks are good for hiding my bad paintings. Absolutely. I love painting in my sketchbook because you can just close it and never show anybody, but you still paint it, so that's great. All right, so as I'm working my way across this painting here, I'm just kind of mixing up my trees. I'm doing both the deciduous trees and the evergreen trees and just kind of ending them at about this spot, which is about maybe a quarter of the way up the paper hiding that transition between those two, the grass and the, and the mountains. Just started painting. Is there any good references like books that would help teach techniques? Um, I don't know too many books, but I do know that the internet is full of um, techniques. My TikTok has lots of art, um, like watercolor lessons and watercolor uh, tips and tricks. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a playlist that I have called uh, watercolor lessons. And some of them are more basic. Some of them are, you know, painting a full landscape painting. So you can kind of pick what you're in the mood for. If you want to just practice some techniques, you can do that. Um, so I will plug my own TikTok there, but you know, the internet is just absolutely full of um, lessons and techniques and, and artists who are willing to teach you. So I would recommend just perusing YouTube and TikTok and um, and seeing kind of what works for you. With watercolor, do you start with light colors then dark? Yes, generally, because you can't go from dark to light in watercolor. Watercolor is all transparent, translucent, so um, you have to layer darker colors on top of light. You have to know which colors are going to stay light and keep them that way. Um, you can't really, unless you're gonna do mixed media and mix in some gouache for highlights, which I do plenty of the time. Um, if you wanna keep it just watercolor, you do have to kind of be careful to not go too dark too fast because there's no going back. All 
obviously water runs, but if, is there ever a time when you can use an easel? Yes, um, that is a technique that people will do, especially if they're doing something that um, is a little bit more precise and doesn't require like, it's not a wet on wet technique where there's water kind of running down the paint painting. We could do the rest of this painting um, in an easel. It's because we're using darker colors that aren't so watery. I could do this tilted up and it wouldn't affect how the water looks. Um, we couldn't do the beginning of this painting in an easel though, because we had so much water on the paper, it would uh, kind of run off of the paper. So it just depends on what you're painting and the technique. I don't usually use an easel for my watercolor paintings. Um, I usually just do them on the, on the desk here. All right, here we are at the end of the paper. We have filled in the tree line. Woohoo. Now, something that you can do after this dries, I might show it, I might not, but I just wanna make sure that you know that this is an option. You can go back and take the same color, and once these trees are dry, you can add some more um, texture within these uh, shapes. So if you go back to the beginning where it's dry, you can start adding a little bit more texture within the shape and that will make it look even more realistic, um, especially here toward the bottom where you want a little bit of a shadow. That is optional. If you feel like you like where your painting is at now, you can ignore that. Um, but I just want to tell you that this is an option. You can see once it dries, it'll be more subtle than that, but you can see that it kind of adds a little bit more uh, texture within those shapes. So that's an option for you. Okay. Just making sure there's no other questions. Do you have any tips for oil paint? I just started. I do. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to go into that right now because I do want to focus on this painting. But I do have a video or two on my TikTok. Just find the art lessons um, playlist and it's back there a little ways um, on tips for oil painting. I might make some more videos, more oil painting videos soon if that's something that people want to see. Okay, so for this, a few colors. Um, I can't really tell you which brush for each step because it kind of depends on what you have, but this is a four round that I'm using for the rest of this. Um, I might use this zero detail brush, which I recommend you get if you don't have a detail brush. Detail brushes are great. Um, so for the rest of this painting, we're going to mix together some of those same colors that we used for this foreground here, that kind of golden yellow color, the green color, maybe a slightly darker green. Um, really whatever colors you want to add for the field. You could do kind of an orange color too if you want. Um, yeah, just mix a few colors that you want to include. You can be creative with this. Greens, yellows, blues, reds would be good if you want to add maybe some wildflowers, that would work well. Have you ever thought of creating your own line of paint or brushes, like your own brand? Um, I've only thought about it enough to be like, yeah, I don't think I'm there yet. <laughs> I would love to in the future maybe, but I feel like that might be in the very distant future for me because there's a lot of logistics and um, just a lot that goes into something like that. So I don't know if I'm there yet or whether I would be there in the next even like five years. Can we decide other details then from your reference? Absolutely. Yes, this is your own painting. I'm just kind of leading you on what I'm doing. Um, but please feel free to um, digress and paint whatever you want. I'm also going to do kind of this gray color for a bit of a shadow. And I'm going to use this underneath these trees here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a drop shadow underneath where these trees are. This is a, a slightly lighter kind of green, greenish gray color, kind of like that. And 
Do I have to use watercolor paper? Um, yeah, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. There's no laws against it. But uh, generally, watercolor paper will be better for watercolor painting. It is made to hold up to all the water that we're putting on it. So I'm just gonna put this little gray green color underneath all these trees and that will kind of ground them in this space for now. And then with the rest of these colors, we're just gonna add grass, we're gonna add little shadows. So I might take this green and just add a little spot of, um, you know, darker color like that. Maybe add a little bit of grass coming out of the top of it. You can blend it out. I'm just gonna kind of give you options for this. We're filling in this bottom section here, the very bottom. And I'm just gonna kind of give you options and you can do whatever you want for your own painting. Maybe I'll take some of this yellow and just add some grass kind of poking up in the foreground here. You could add a fence if you want to. That's always a good detail. Feel free to add a fence. Maybe with this darker green, I'll put that in here. Feel free to do like wet on wet techniques where you drop some colors into spaces that are already wet. Maybe I'll show you that, how to add some wildflowers. Maybe we'll do some red wildflowers in here. I don't know. Be creative. Fill in this space however you feel like it should be filled in. Can you say the color of the grass that you're doing right now? Or is it still just a blend of? Um, I am doing like the, the golden yellow that we used to fill it in originally. I'm doing some greens. You can see my palette up here is kind of this yellow couple of greens, this gray green that down here. Maybe I'll do a little bit more of a blue. That's always fun. It's always a good shadow color to add some blue in there. Sorry if the road noise is making it hard to hear. I'm also switching sometimes to my detail brush here, which is this really tiny brush. This one is linked in my um, art supply recommendations tab if you're looking for a detail brush. It is always good to have one of those around. Please someone put Please put someone flying a kite. Not in this one, but um, people are free to do that to their own if they want. You could add some birds in up here. I think in this one, I put some birds in up at the very top here. Feel free to do that if you want to. When you're done, do you add that transparent liquid over to protect the drawing? Nope, not with watercolor. Um, that will ruin the watercolor painting. Watercolor doesn't really need to be protected. You just have to make sure it doesn't get wet. But um, once it's dry, it's kind of like a stain in the paper. And so it really won't like go anywhere. Watercolor paint is pretty light fast and um, you don't really need to protect it. I get that question a lot, but there's nothing really to do to protect watercolor paintings. Um, they're pretty hardy. So there's not really anything you need to do for them. Can you share which kit this is? It's uh, Windsor Newton watercolor paints. Do you do watercolor face portraits? I have dabbled before. I don't do them as commissions. Um, I don't really do any portraits as commissions. I'm not, uh, my skill for those is not there yet, but I do try to practice when I can just to make sure I'm being a, a well-rounded artist. I think watercolor portraits are fun to experiment with. You can do some really cool effects on the face if you um, kind of know some basic watercolor techniques. Those can be pretty fun. Dang, miss this. Will this be available as playback? Yep, this will be available in my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hello, welcome. All the links that I'm talking about are in the description of the YouTube video.
Is it true that colors need to get cooler the further back the image? Um, generally, yes. There are some exceptions. Um, sunsets, for example, stuff like that. But generally, colors will get cooler and more desaturated. So closer to gray as you further away in the distance and lighter. So that's why this mountain range in the back here looks the furthest back is because it's lighter and then these darker ones are on top of it. That's how we create distance in a painting. Did you do this from a reference photo? Yep, I took this reference photo. This is in Colorado. So these are the Rocky Mountains here. And um, I took this, it's a pretty bad photo. Like the light was not very good but I really liked the layers of mountains and the trees, and so I was able to make a decent painting out of a bad reference photo. <laughs> Back here um, at the base of these trees too, we can add some grass to help ground them, ground the trees. Lots of different options. You can just keep adding grass as you see fit, keep adding textures, keep adding details, all of that stuff. Did you learn how to paint on your own? Uh, more or less, I did take art classes um, growing up in school, just like whatever art classes were offered. Um, I was an art minor in college, so I did take some art classes in college, but those were mostly, like by the time I was in college, they weren't really teaching techniques. We had assignments um, that required a little bit more thought behind the piece and um, just a little bit more planning. So it wasn't like they were teaching techniques anymore. It was more putting together a project. Those were the assignments, which I really loved. I loved um, studio hours in college. Those were always my favorite classes because they were three hours long, twice a week, and you just got to go in and paint the whole time or draw or whatever the class was. So I really liked that. Okay, I might do a few wildflowers in here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of red. Just for funsies. And maybe just start dotting. Oh, that's too red, way too red. Maybe I'll do purple. <laughs> red can be dangerous sometimes. It can look like, uh, you know, it can start to look like a murder scene pretty quickly. So we wanna, wanna avoid red. Um, I'm gonna do purple instead. Purple's a good color. And we'll just start dropping in little dots. I like to do kind of sections of them, if that makes sense. So spots where there's lots of them and kind of spread those out. Just loose little dots. Already started my murder scene. Nice. Do I have to wet the blank paper and then let it dry before starting the painting? Some people do that. I, I don't, I don't think that's necessary, but some people swear by that. So I'd recommend you try it just to, just for the sake of trying it and see how you like it. Okay. Here's the wildflowers, here they come. It's also pretty easy to overdo it on the wildflowers, so make sure you're paying attention to your paper and stop adding the wildflowers when you feel like it's enough. <laughs> So I think that's probably good for me. Feel free to keep adding grass. Feel free to keep adding wildflowers, whatever you want to keep adding to your painting until you like it. Um, once you like it, I would recommend that you stop because it's easy to overdo it. And that's something that, that's a lesson that you'll end up learning the hard way, I promise. You overdo a lot of paintings before you figure out when you need to stop. Uh, which is right now for me, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay, here we are. Here is the final painting, and since you stuck around for the ending of this, you get to see the tape peel, which is the best part of any painting, let's be honest. 
So while I'm doing this, I'm gonna plug my stuff one more time. Um, if you'd like to leave me a little tip or a gift for today's lesson, I do really appreciate that. My Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio, so you can choose whichever you are more comfortable with. Um, any amount is totally fine, but like I said before, I am a full-time artist, so that does. Tips do help me pay the bills. My Etsy shop is also linked in my bio, so if you'd like to check out the art that I sell, bookmarks, postcards, prints, originals, all of that good stuff, that is also um, linked in my bio, so it means a lot to me if you want to check out my Etsy shop. Fall stuff is on there right now, so make sure you go check out that fall stuff. Uh, this tutorial will be posted to my YouTube channel, which is also linked in my bio, so make sure you go there and subscribe. I do always really appreciate that. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I'm like four away. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. All of these paint and sip lessons are there, um, including this one later today or tomorrow. And there's our final painting. That is all the plugs that I have for you. I do really appreciate y'all being here. If you painted with me the whole time, or if you just stopped by to watch the ending of this painting, I appreciate you regardless. Um, I hope you had fun. I enjoy painting with you guys every week.